Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So just to uh, uh, summarize what we have done uh, and to formally tell them that in the wrinkle flame regime we have, we have got essentially the Reynolds number to be greater than 1 and the Karlovich number to be you know, less than 1 and U primes uh, by SL is less than 1. So of course your this means that your um, your flame thickness is less than the Kolmogorov uh, length scale and the flame element retains a laminar flame structure within the turbulent flame suite. And since U prime is SL is less than 1 that uh, flame cell flame layer surface is only slightly wrinkled. Okay. And in the corrugated flame letter regime, of course, uh, you have Reynolds number to be greater than one, and Karlovich number is still flame Karlovich number is still less than one. But and your U prime by SL is um, is uh, uh, is uh, actually uh, is uh, mm, as you see here in the corrugated flame letter regimes, your U prime by SL is greater than one. So this is a typo. Please correct it. Mm, so uh, your uh, uh, U prime by SL is uh, greater than one. Okay, so uh, uh, your um, so still your since uh, your LL that is the flame thickness, the preheat zone thickness is less than the uh, the Kolmogorov length scale. The flamelet structure is retained. That is a laminar flame. Uh, the flame element retains a laminar flame structure, and your U prime by SL is essentially greater than uh, one. So the flamelet structure is highly convoluted. Okay, so you can see here uh, to just to give you an example. Here you see an eddy uh, which is essentially rolling it, and you see here it's essentially first stretching it and then forming a fold mm, and uh, this this kind of structures are are found in this corrugated flame let's regime okay but in the reaction sheet limit uh, in the sh reaction sheet regime when the reynolds number is greater than 1 and the kolovitz number is uh, mm, uh, the flame kolovitz number is actually uh, uh, greater than uh, here also the, it should be greater than 1 okay mm, uh, the in the reaction sheet limit when the when the uh, flame kolovitz number is actually greater than 1 mm, i'll just So this has to be greater than one, okay, and this uh, flame color which number it has to be greater than one. So uh, when the Reynolds number is this in the reaction sheet regime, when the rea Reynolds number is greater than one and the flame color which number is greater than one, no, but of course the reaction color which number is still less than one. So this means that color which number greater than one, as I've said, means that your LL is essentially greater than your eta. Okay, and your tau L is greater than uh, tau eta. So it means that essentially the AD is smaller than LL, which are um, essentially uh, but uh, still greater than eta, can penetrate the preheat zone for large eddies inside a for large eddies uh, flame is uh, mm, uh, the flame is uh, still a flamelet. Mm, uh, so um, uh, what is a for large eddies means that the eddies which are greater than LL, the flame still behaves like a flamelet manner. And the reaction sheet thickness, um, of course, uh, this LR is um, is uh, is less than eta, so the reaction sheet is only wrinkled. So the reaction sheet is uh, like this; it is it does not change structure, whereas this AD has penetrated inside this, and this 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 thing can change the structure like this. Okay, so the preheat zone uh, structure is uh, is changed, whereas the reaction zone structure is retained. So this is called the reaction sheet limit. Okay. And this is very uh, very much uh, of practical interest in terms of gas turbine engines, in terms of like SI engines, in uh, in in, in um, afterburners, etc. A lot of those uh, flames are essentially belong to the reaction sheet limit. Okay, now well stirred reactor regime that is uh, uh, typically not um, experimentally not uh, has has not been well studied. It uh, tells us that the Reynolds number greater than one, then Kolovich number reaction Kolovich number greater than one, and the entire flow behaves like a well stirred reactor without any distinct local flame structure. Of course, as you said, that these are like um, like uh, like uh, loose uh, boundaries to identify the flames, mm, and even in the um, uh, even in this uh, in this this uh, limitation is that that uh, you see here we assume that the Kolmogorov length scales have um, uh, are are capable enough to uh, effectively change the structure. Now the Kolmogorov length scales are essentially the these these eddies are just prior to dissipation. So the Kolmogorov eddies are just are very short lived, and that the, because they will be immediately dissipated. So whether they carry enough kinetic energy to a seven Store the flame structure that needs to be explored. So, anyways, uh, these are just uh, some um, some guidelines about uh, what kind of flames to expect in what uh, situations, and based on this, one can formulate different kind of models and uh, apply different kind of turbulent closure models or reaction closure models. Okay.
So, one thing uh, just one uh, few comments about the interpretation of the Kalovich number and the dam column number. So, the dam column number helps in assessing the interaction of large scales of turbulence with the flame. Okay. So, large scales is of course of the rough integral of the order of um, uh, of the order of um, uh, the integral length scale because dam column number the flame dam column number is essentially given by your tau integral divided by tau flame or tau l. Okay. Now, where is the call of its number and of course, the dam column number greater than 1 means that the flames time scales are smaller than the large time scales in turbulence and it is difficult for large scales to disturb the flame structure. So, when dam column number is much greater than 1 your flame structure essentially retains the same property as that of a laminar flame. When dam column number is less than 1 it means that your uh, eddies of the integral length scales are even uh, 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 can uh, disturb the flame structure. So, uh, when the dam column number less than 1 essentially means that the flames turbulence interaction uh, can become very strong and the interaction can span from the uh, essentially the integral size eddies down to the uh, smallest uh, scales in turbulence. Whereas, the column its number it is interesting it helps in uh, uh, assessing the interaction of small scales of uh, the of turbulence with the flame. Because the column its number is essentially uh, if you remember the column its number is essentially the uh, the flame uh, time scale uh, divided by the Kolmogorov time scale. So, it essentially assesses the interaction of small scales of turbulence with the flame and uh, this uh, helps in uh, uh, telling us that how much uh, uh, mixing it can do in inside the inside the flame uh, structure. Okay, uh, mixing of uh, like uh, uh, fresh reactants with the intermediates or the intermediates with the products and so mm, and all these sort of things it can tell. Okay. Now, and the Kolovich number much less than 1 means the flame time scales are smaller than the Kolmogorov scales and turbulence and it is difficult for the small scales to disturb, disturb the flame structure. So, these are the 2 limiting conditions that the dam column number much greater than 1 and Kolovich number much less than 1 essentially means something that the laminar flame structure the exact laminar structure or the near bent laminar flame structure will be preserved. Whereas, dam column number much less than 1 and Kolovich number much greater than 1 this means that uh, uh, that essentially you are in a in a state where turbulence is very strong uh, and uh, it can disturb the flame structure at different levels mm, and uh, when it disturbs the flame structure the associated properties like diffusivity can uh, can can uh, inside the flame uh, when it has to be considered that is uh, that is a turbulent diffusivity has to be considered and can in certain cases override molecular diffusivity so this this needs to be uh, understood but of course uh, molecular diffusivity has been shown by recent research that molecular diffusivity is still very important at all at all conditions uh, when it comes to flames essentially uh, because at smaller scales the molecular diffusion again becomes very important uh, when the large gradients are produced okay now, a uh, few definitions of flame speeds uh, of course, as you see that the laminar flame speed definition that we have obtained um, uh, this laminar flame speed uh, expression that we obtained that was valid for planar laminar flame speed, but still that is uh, gives you a very clear idea about how the flames should behave on what factors it depends. Mm, and uh, now, but for uh, doing analysis in turbulent flows we need to have different kind of uh, definitions uh, from which uh, suppose you have a turbulent fl uh, flame solution. A DNS data set. Okay, so and from that, how we'll extract the flame consumption, uh, the different flame speed. So one is a flame consumption speed, which is given by the if you integrate over the entire volume, the 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 fuel consumption rate, and normalize that by rho times y f of the reactants divided by a reference area. That gives you the local flame consumption flame speed. Okay. And then also there is a definition of displacement flame speed and which is defined essentially the, the way the flame is def, uh, the flame speed is defined that it is a local uh, and it can be defined at any point that it is a, uh, it's a uh, velocity of the flame surface with respect to the local uh, flow field okay, in the direction normal to the flame surface itself. So, V f is the is the velocity of the flame surface uh, absolute, these are all in absolute uh, in, in, in uh, the laboratory reference frames. Mm, uh, so, this is uh, V f is the velocity of the flame surface and u is the velocity of the local fluid. So, if this is the velocity of the flame surface the flame surface is this is the flame surface it is moving in with our velocity V f and this local velocity is u. Okay. So, then the uh, the resultant uh, velocity of course, is uh, uh, we get a minus u and the resultant uh, velocity of these two things of V f and minus u is essentially given by S d times n. Okay. So, then you multiply with the normal vector you get S d. So, uh, from this also you can get if you can track the flame surface. 
Now, uh, here we need to introduce um, uh, before we go into it, uh, before we go into the other uh, details about how uh, to we model these things, um, how do we model uh, turbulent uh, or flames in turbulent flows. Uh, one important concept for laminar premix flames that we need to introduce here is essentially called the concept of flame stretch. Okay, it is essentially the uh, 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 rate of change of area uh, with of the flame surface area with time uh, per unit original uh, area. Okay, mm, so as you that is this is important because as you see that uh, 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 you if you go back to the previous uh, if you go back to the previous uh, velo uh, video that we shown uh, that we had shown that uh, you see that initially this surface area was planar, okay, mm, and uh, initially it was planar and uh, but uh, you see this is planar and then in the same uh, cross sectional area. The it becomes convoluted, it becomes distorted. So, of course, you can understand this uh, at a later time, the surface area of this convoluted surface is much greater than the initial planar surface area. Okay. So, of course, uh, then, then the surface area is increasing, then the surface area is increasing because of the stretching action of turbulence. So, uh, this in, in premix flames um, and even to some extent in non-premix flames, the stretch flame stretch is a very important concept. Okay, it is the rate at which is the um, rate of change of area per unit original area. And uh, premix flame as you know can be um, is sensitive to non-uniformities of the flow and flame curvature and flame unsteadiness. And uh, the effect of the uh, of the all these things that is why does the flame area change? The flame area actually change because of these things that is the non-uniformities uh, non of the flow, it changes, or changes due to flame curvature, it changes due to flame unsteadiness and all of this effect of this non-idealities over a flame can be quantified through the stretch rate of a flame. So, actually it is the 1 one by is actually the you will see that the stretch is essentially 1 by a uh, d a d t, but this ch this change in the area is affected through this uh, things like the like the non uniformities of the flow and uh, um, curvature and flame unsteadiness. So, as you see here that the flame stretch is defined as 1 by a d a d t, where a is the, ra ra is the area of an infinitesimal element on the surface. Okay. Now, um, uh, and this is quantified of course, I will not derive it, but you can take a look into uh, Professor Law's book um, for the derivation of this thing, uh, where this uh, flame stretch defined by kappa is actually defined as the sum of two quantities. That is, it is the sum of the tangential straining rate on the flame surface, which is given by this quantity okay. and uh, uh, it is essentially the strain rate when you project it on the tangent to the flame surface area. So, strain rates can be obtained from the flow strain rates as you know S i j is equal to d u i half of d u i d x j plus d u j d x i and when you project this along the flame surface area. So, uh, what I want to say is that the strain rate in a fluid is essentially S i j is half of um, d u i d x j plus d u j uh, d x i okay. and then uh, if you have a flame surface like this. So, if this is the normal and this is the tangent, um, a tangent can be in any arbitrary direction on the surface. So, uh, uh, but um, uh, suppose you choose a, a particular direction of a tangent. So, the tangential flame, uh, flame stretch on that uh, is given by when you project S i j onto uh, the along the tangent and that is uh, uh, given by this quantity. Okay. And uh, so, uh, this is uh, important because when you have flow non uniformities, actually what it means is that tangential strain rate is what it means is that. So, if you have a velocity on the flame at this point which is this and at this point which is small. So, of course, this, this point of the flame will move much farther than this point. So, essentially at the after some time then this, this surface will look like this. Okay. So, this point has uh, maybe has moved um, here and this, this point have moved here. Okay. So, as you see that this leads to growth of the surface area, whereas if all points on the flame on the, on the flame tangent if they move with the same velocities then there is no flame stretch. So, the flow non uniformities okay, flow non uniformities along the tangent is what create this tangential strain rate. It is very intuitive that you are basically on a surface if you have uh, if you have different if you push the, the different parts of a surface differently then the of course, uh, if you this can lead to uh, this can lead to extension or contraction of the surface mm, and that is what is uh, quantified by the tangential uh, flame uh, is quantified by the tangential strain rate all right. And the other thing is that when you have curvature suppose you have a, mm, uh, similarly you have a like a, a flame which is a spherical flame which expands. So, of course, after expansion you will see that this point has gone here, this point has gone here. So, of course, this uh, this thing has uh, even if there is no fluid non-uniformity, 
Uh, so, you see that because of the curvature this this part of the flame segment of has become like bigger and as a result of that uh, uh, this is essentially causing stretch also. So, stretch essentially increases the surface area or it can decrease the flame stretch surface area also that if the flame stretch is positive it will decrease increase the surface area if the flame stretch is negative it will reduce the surface area. And uh, this is essentially as you see is quantified by two things uh, this uh, tangential surface area tangential strain rate and the uh, tangential strain rate and the uh, flame speed times the curvature. So, these are the two things. Okay. So, in the next uh, 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 we will take a break and in the next class we will basically uh, come back into uh, discussion about the different models for uh, turbulent combustion. Thank you.